Here's Carolyn Jarvis. Good evening and welcome to a special edition of 16 by 9. He's been called the Canadian psycho, the butcher of Montreal and the cannibal porn star. But behind the headlines, who is the man who has been the focus of an international manhunt? Luca Magnotta, now in police custody, is being tied to one of the most heinous murders in Canadian history. And tonight, 16 by 9 has exclusive video of Magnotta describing his obsessions and his twisted priorities. But first, a warning, this story may not be suitable for all viewers. A hunt for a suspected murderer. Wanted in the gruesome case. A blood-soaked mattress. Another bloody package has been found. Murdered, dismembered, and decapitated. When I look in the mirror now, I just saw the little flaws just come out. Canada's most wanted man, Luca Rocco Magnotta. Eric Newman, a.k.a. Luca Magnotta. Yeah, if everyone has to admit, though, if you are better looking, you are going to get more fans. Adding urgency to the worldwide search. This guy's got to be caught. Threatening to kill again. He's getting exactly what he wants. He has already won. Did you anything? Or? No. Oh, okay. No. Okay. So go ahead. All right, my name is Luca Magnotta, and I'm 25. So what is the surgery you're thinking about having done, or the procedure? Um, well, it's going to be at the back of my uh, uh, head. Can you tell me what it is you're having done? Uh, it's a hair transplant. This is video of Luca Magnotta, 25 years old at the time, and auditioning for a role in a reality TV show called Plastic Makes Perfect, a show that follows people getting cosmetic surgery. Magnotta wants to be accepted so he can get a hair transplant. So basically, uh, they, they cut open the back of my head and they take a strip of uh, flesh off. For 20 minutes, the cameras roll and Magnata talks. I've had my nose done. I've had uh, two hair transplants, like I said before. And I'm planning on doing muscle implants in my pecs and my arms, so. Do you think you're a bit of an also. addict? <laughs> Yeah, my name is Luca, and I'm a cosmetic surgery addict. But yeah, I I would say to be out to be blatantly honest, I I think that I I am because just the profession that I'm in, I need to um, step up my game basically, and that's why I'm having all these procedures done. The tape is an insider's glimpse into the man linked to horrendous acts: murder, dismemberment, cannibalism. How important are your looks to you? Oh my God, if that's number one. If I don't have my looks, then I don't have any life. My looks and my body are my life. According to private investigator Dave Perry, the video reveals a deeply troubled man and his lust for notoriety. He's clearly a narcissist. He's also a sexual deviant. He's into all kinds of masochistic type behavior. I've uh, had three done, sorry, two done already. Can you and tell me what it is you're having done? Uh, it's a hair transplant. Even though I'm awake, you know, I, I can still feel them cutting open my head, but it's not like you feel all the pain, you know what I mean? But you just have to stay there for like hours and hours and feel them cutting open your head and putting it in. And you can actually feel like the blood dripping down the back of your neck. What does that say about someone when they describe a hair transplant in, in those gruesome details? When I watched that part of the video, that, that's the part that made me realize we're dealing with somebody who's quite different. Uh, somebody who's uh, really into pain. I also think that he took some particular delight to, in terms of the pain and the procedures and all those kinds of things that most people would never talk about. Are you saying that he's had so many cosmetic procedures because he enjoys the process of being cut? There was only one conclusion I could come up with, and that he enjoyed the process. Forensic psychologist David Nussbaum has done hundreds of clinical assessments over his career, so we invited him to take a look at the audition tape. From what I've seen, this is not inconsistent with someone who uh, would be uh, considered a psychopath. While Nussbaum makes it clear he has neither met Magnata nor has he done a clinical assessment on him, what he sees at first glance are multiple personality disorders. 
Magnata is one instance, although a very remarkable instance, of the confluence of a number of conditions that, that came together in, in sort of a very negative, imperfect storm, if you will. Take, for example, Magnata's obsession with changing his appearance and his name. At birth, he was Eric Newman, but today he uses multiple aliases and, according to police, has more than 70 Facebook pages linked to different names. Nussbaum says a condition called borderline personality type might be why. Borderlines are people who have um, issues with their sense of self. Who are they? And they don't have a well-integrated sense of self. And in different situations, they can behave very differently. And then there's Magnata's fixation on surgery. He's already had his eyes, nose, and two hair transplants done, and yet he wants more. I've seen this other guy on a cosmetic surgery show, and he had on his forehead here, he had like uh, two little bumps in his skull, and they protrude out of his forehead. And he had his grinded down, but because he, he thought it looked like devil horns. And I notice when I look in the mirror that I have the same thing too, like one here and one here. So I want, I want to taken off my forehead. And I'm gonna look there, I'm like, damn, it's getting bigger and bigger on my forehead. Nussbaum says another condition, body dysmorphic disorder, could offer an explanation. What he focuses on, what he perceives is, to the rest of us, would probably not even be apparent or visible. Like he was talking about these horns that he saw on his forehead and looking at his picture. Uh, I don't know if you could see any for, uh, horns on his forehead, but I certainly couldn't. And while personality disorders are not necessarily cause for criminal acts, in this case, they could be revealing. I don't like the way I am. I'm not going to stay this way. I'm going to go on somebody completely different. Will you ever be perfect in your own eyes? The voice behind the camera that February day in 2008 was a producer named Valerie who auditioned dozens of hopefuls for the show. And this is where, right here, I think this is the wall that used to be painted blue where um, I did my, my look interview. And there was something uncomfortable about being in the same room as Magnata, she says, something about the way he looked at her. Certainly there was more going on behind the curtain than, than what he was, he was showing. I felt on some level that he was looking for a reaction you know, the, the conversations that we have and the things that he would share. He was looking for uh, a particular reaction. Magnata didn't make the cut for the show, but Valerie says his audition was memorable. The video that was produced that day was only one of Magnata's many on-camera appearances. Well, usually everybody is like, everybody liked me. You know, when I went to go see them, you know, we all had a good time. In 2007, he was interviewed on the set of The Naked News about his job as a male escort. I love traveling and I love having sex and you know, meeting new people, so I'm it's very a happy. Good fit. And a year earlier... Hi, my name is Luca. He tried out for another reality TV show, Cover Guy, this time trying to get a contract as an underwear model. A lot of people tell me I'm really devastatingly good looking, so... But Magnata's videos don't end there. His work saw him before the camera as well, acting in at least eight adult movies. I'm a big exhibitionist. I walk around my house uh, naked all the time. I don't feel comfortable wearing clothes. Strung together, investigator Perry says these images paint a portrait of a classic narcissist. If you went down the narcissist checklist, you could hit every box with this guy. If Magnata is a narcissist, his search for attention may not have begun last week when he was linked to the killing of 33-year-old Chinese student Lin Jun. It's alleged he murdered, dismembered and decapitated a man now believed to be his boyfriend. Back in 2007, there were unsubstantiated rumors he was dating Carla Homolka. And in 2010, online videos surfaced, allegedly showing Magnata torturing and killing cats. Let's assume the most benign case here that really he had no connection to Carla Hamalka and he didn't really kill the cats, but staged something that looked like he killed the cats. At very least, this suggests someone 
who is looking for notoriety and, and attention. A man looking for attention from so many, and yet the audition tape shows he's estranged from those closest to him. What does your family think? <clears throat> Uh, actually, they've come to the point where they really don't want to talk to me. My whole life is style has become like a, too much for them to handle. Yeah. So I think they're just kind of taking a little break. What about your friends? What they just they keep saying to me all the time, oh, you know what, you look good, you look fine, just don't even worry about it. But I honestly, they don't understand my position in life. They don't understand my goals in life. We caught up with one of Magnata's friends Nina Arsenal, who dated him briefly 10 years ago. My impression was that, that Luca was a person who had never known love, that love just didn't exist for him. He'd intimated to me that um, he had been sexually molested as a child, and uh, kind of in a short period of time after I started to hang out with him, I saw him replaying out that childhood trauma inside the sex business where he worked as an escort and a stripper. The magnata Nina knew indeed had a dark side. He would hit himself repeatedly in the head, she said, and was prone to extreme anger. When his temper went off, it was, it was you know, terrifying. Just the rage within that man. And it was, uh, it was, it was terrifying, but also kind of felt like it was coming from the, this place of like a very, very angry child. This from a man she says was fascinated by Carla Hamulka, Paul Bernardo, and Jeffrey Dahmer. From what I saw on uh, the various videos that I've studied on, on this individual, is that uh, he wasn't just doing it for fame. This guy enjoyed it. Disturbing. Very disturbing. He was enjoying the things that he did and he was getting uh, sexual gratification from the things that he was doing, which puts him in a, a fairly unique, uh, a unique group of individuals that walk our planet. Thank God they're a very small percentage, but he's one of them. Canada's most wanted man, Luca Magnata, was arrested at a Berlin internet cafe. Right up until his arrest, Magnata seemed fixated on himself. According to the employee who spotted him at an internet cafe in Berlin, he was searching the web for sites about himself when seven police officers came in and arrested him. Police insisted. He said, you've got me, and we arrested him. Now in custody, Magnata is facing five charges, including first-degree murder, committing an indignity to a body, and mailing obscene matter. And as all this unfolds, his return to Canada and his eventual trial, Magnata, the man seeking the limelight, finally has the world watching. I think he's going to.